Welcome travelers to my podcast, Hitchhiker's Guide to Ethical Non-Monogamy. I am your host, Ike, and I will be your guide through the journey that is ENM. <laughs> hey y'all, what's going on? Welcome to episode three of Hitchhiker's Guide to EN to Ethical Non-Monogamy, ENM for short. I am your hostess with the mostest, Ike. I also go by Hito in the Kink World. Welcome, 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 and I'm happy to have y'all back. Excuse the delay that we had in regards to getting this recording out again. Y'all, y'all know I got a little ADHD, and okay, I kind of got a little occupied. Um, previous week, traveled with my lady to the Poconos to hang out with a group of people um, to do some adult fun things. Uh, shot a handgun, which was a pretty cool thing to do at the, um, shit, what's it called? The gun range out there. So, overall, you know, just been kind of busy living life and getting things together. We'll try to focus on, like, getting this content out more regularly. But, hey, if you're sticking with me, I really do appreciate it. And I aim to, you know, get more a little consistent with it all. Um, so yeah, I do have road trip music for this episode because the title we have today is the first step of my journey. Now, I kind of realized with the first two episodes, the first one I dived into the concept of opening up your relationship. The second one I went into was about dating while non-monogamous. And then I kind of had this idea because the next this episode was actually supposed to get into polyamory. But then I kind of realized I never even talked about my own little personal journey of how did I get to the point of non-monogamy. Because it wasn't as if I grew like it wasn't as if I grew up in a world where I knew non-monogamy was a thing. I did not even know it was a thing until my like mid to late 20s, which is not that far um, ago. So then I kind of thought like, let me hold off and trying to go into the different ends of of non-monogamy. And let's talk about, let me talk about myself, which I suck at doing. But I figured there might be someone that might take something away from what I have gained in terms of experience and apply it to themselves in some kind of way to kind of help them on their journey. So with this, the road trip music we have is actually the one I used for my first ever reels on my Instagram account, Hitchhiking, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to ENM, all together on Instagram, where I played A Thousand Miles by Vanessa Carlton. It is a cute jam. It is known in the um, white space, be it, hey, you put it on, people know that, duh, 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 duh. or if you've seen white chicks, like, come on. Terry Crews, he, he he has his problematic moments, but <laughs> he was funny as fuck singing that song. But yes, the reason why I chose that song is because I truly believe when it comes to any kind of journey, we kind of forget that we got to take the first step to even get anywhere, be it in the wrong direction or right. And I feel like this song is appropriate for that. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and get into it. Um, kind of already explained recently, haven't really done too much. Um, when it comes to being non-monogamous, bandwidth is important. And I'm trying to make sure I don't have myself spent. Because like, I gotta be mindful of my own emotional energy as well as the emotions of partners that I have. And honestly, shout out to a calendar because it does kind of help you see and schedule like time for yourself because yes it's great to have other partners for various reasons but you can never forget about yourself because if you burn yourself out then what good are you to them be it one person or more or what good are you to yourself if you're just burnt out and have no energy to even enjoy the things that you enjoy so you know always be mindful of that make sure you take care of you that way you can take care of others now (sighs) <sighs> the fun part, talking about myself. I don't like doing this, so hopefully we don't do this too often, says the guy that does a podcast by himself. <laughs> okay, now, before I even get into that journey of mine, I kind of want to go ahead and establish some ground rules. Now, the reason why I say this is because, look, I am not everyone, therefore my experience is not the same as everyone else. I am a cis-hetero man. 
cis meaning that my sex and gender identity align, hetero being that I am romantically and sexually drawn to cis women. Okay, so as I wrote that, I kind of did think about it. I will say I am heterosexual-ish because I am attracted to non-binary vagina owners. And I'm look, if I'm attracted to you and you're a vagina owner, more than likely, I am more intrigued. Now, in regards to that, I'm not really attracted to um, trans men. Like, I don't see that full masculine feature appealing to me. Like, no, I still enjoy a feminine look to that degree. Um, I mean, hey, I have dealt with some non-binary individuals and, you know, gender, sexuality, sex, it is all kind of weird and convoluted and we all just make it up and go with it from there. So that's like, just want to at least let that be known because I myself have, um, you know, had some sexual relations where I guess they'll be termed, I hope this is not inappropriate, but like dyke slash butch where it's like, they're essentially, think young MA, except they are bisexual in the sense that they are sexually inclined to both male and female, but they are essentially lesbian romantically. I have um, had some inner um, sexual relations with a couple of um, individual ladies like that. So it's just, it's really is a mixed bag in that kind of regards. And last ground rules, just remember. Sex, male or female, did you come out with a penis? Did you come out with a vagina? Did you come out with neither and become intersex? Gender, that's the construct where we kind of divulge uh, masculine, feminine identities onto individuals. And, you know, there's a lot of variations to that. Sexuality, just who you're attracted to. That's pretty much how we're going it from here. And, yeah, those are the ground rules. So stick with me. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and kind of go into my journey, which honestly, my dating journey didn't begin until 2007. Like, I grew up a sheltered kid. I had a two-parent home, mom and dad, Catholic, um, grew up with my siblings. Excuse the ding, because you know, I'd be, I'd be forgetting that, um, yeah... There we go. We, we got my stuff muted. <laughs> but yeah, so two-parent home. I saw the traditional monogamous outlook. They were together only. I got my four siblings. That's what we saw growing up. I mean, I saw my parents fight and get into it. And um, through the years, there was a point where I was an eyewitness to some infidelity on my father's part. Because, you know, he wanted to get him a little girlfriend while we were in Nigeria. And essentially, I kind of broke up the family. But, you know, people are human. My mom's an angel. There's a difference. <laughs> and I kind of got my first, like, on-site look at infidelity. Um, that did eventually break it up. They ended up getting a divorce after my mom tried her hardest to try to see, you know, wait it out because when it comes to monogamy, one of the biggest things you see is time that you put into a relationship. Like they've been together 20, like 30 years at that point. So of course my mom saw a relationship as an investment. She put that much time into it. And it seems like one quality of monogamous relationship is that the time you put in, it you don't want to see it end abruptly. No matter the red flags, you're going to stick it out just because of the time you put in. Because otherwise, you essentially wasted 30 years of your life on someone that was not going to be forever. So it's I guess that was the first blow to my views in regards to monogamy. But, I, you know, we're in a society where monogamy is king. And I still, again, did not know about any other variations of non-monogamy. I just knew that you find someone, you get married, you have kids, and you try to either die together or try not to be lonely when one of them dies first. And then we enter my college years. Again, sheltered child, grew up, um, spent four years in Nigeria, came back two years in high school, didn't really know by, didn't get to know no one. I didn't even have my first like legitimate kiss until college. 
if you see how I live life now, I don't know if it makes sense or you'd be like, really, nigga? But hey, that's who I am. But yeah, so it was in college I actually started dating. And um, it 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 was weird. It was it was very weird <laughs> because like I met this beautiful woman, and so I went to UT, and um, pretty much all the black people hung out in the X lounge. Like every black person, I won't I right, won't say every, but majority knows the X lounge. That's where the black kids hang out, and that's where I normally hang out in between classes and whatnot. Met this beautiful woman. Um, we kind of kicked it off a bit. You know, like just hanging out, chit chatting, and all these other good things. That's kind of you know, in the terms of courting in, um, in college when you're broke, you go to the cafeteria or you just do some random things because I don't know no better. I did, what? I don't think I had a car then. It was just I think I had a car. It was just all kinds, of, and this was oh, fifteen, fifteen years ago. Time flies, and yeah, I. It was exciting. Like, this girl actually liked me. I never really, like, talked to someone in terms of, like, hey, can we go together in that sense? Like, we went on a couple of dates. We hung. Well, we didn't even go on dates. I was broke. I was a college kid. We went to her apartment, and we just hung out. Yes, she was a year older than me. But, yeah, that's all we did. We watched movies, and that's all we did. Um, Eventually, we did have a, a very passionate makeup session. That shit escalated after a few weeks to where we actually just, like, went together and it was a good time, but then we reached the summer session where um, I was doing summer school, and um, she let me just go ahead and use her place because she was going back home for the summer. She already paid the rent on it, so I'm like, all right, cool. I'll go ahead and kick it there, and um, like around the end of it, she accused me of cheating on her. Mind you, I'm over here thinking, yo, it's my first relationship ever, and she is amazing. I mean, beautiful body, funny. Like, I'm not about to fuck this up because I'm a hopeless romantic. So, in my head, cheating was never, ever a thought in my life. Um, And then, yeah, she was like, oh, no, this wasn't mine. What is this doing here? Oh, you must have been with somebody. I'm like, no, like, never. No one's ever crossed into your room and all these other things. Like, I was feeling bad. Like, what the fuck did I do? Like what's happening here to where she broke up with me she was like you know i can't trust you yada 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 like yo it's gonna have to just end i'm like damn like that's how it goes like it's just over like i didn't even do nothing thankfully she did give me closure in the sense that she was like she knew i never i didn't cheat on her she was just looking for an out i'm like yeah that's still fucked up that i was fucked up you you kind of fucked me up for a bit But it was just one of those lessons I learned where they come and go. Like a relationship can end off of any reason that can be made up. It could just be a relationship can end because it's Tuesday. So that was like literally one of the first things I learned in regards to a relationship where it was like, oh, wow, okay. It was here, now it's gone. And then, you know, time moves on. Um, I am a, I'm, I'm a UT student with ADHD and don't even know it. So guess what your boy is doing? Struggling because yo, I could not get those grades at the end because I will start strong, but starting strong in college don't mean shit because midterms are months later. And by mi- months later, my mind is already on who I am. Yeah. I don't feel like getting up right now. Huh? Daydreams. Ooh, what's this? Shiny object. Because it wasn't as if I was partying and drinking all the time. Like, no, I'll just be in my room trying to, like, figure out, like, why do I, why I don't care about the schooling thing that I'm spending thousands on. Thankfully, I got diagnosed, like, um, five years too late. But, hey, I'm going back into school with Vivance. It's ain't an ad, but, yo, Vivance is clutch. Um, but, yeah, going through it. I did end up meeting someone else down the line, this time a year younger. Um, Tall, beautiful, it's just... Again, I'm a hopeless romantic, and I learned I have a thing for dark-skinned women. Um, But yeah, it was like one of those weird kind of developments where I guess she found me attractive, or at least liked me. I found her attractive. We kicked it every now and then. And... um, 
a bit down the way, some adult activities um, kicked in. So yeah, we fucked and it was a good time. It was great. I mean, imagine having sex with someone you, almost your height. Because like she was like six foot six one, I'm six three. It was like, it was amazing. And like down, like, you know, we messed around a bit. It was a good time. Nothing was really discussed about the st- establishing the relationship. It was just literally, we vibed, we clicked, we fucked. And down, and then there was one time when we were about to get into it where she was emotional, where she thought that, um, like we could never date or be together because I'm looking at her like a whore. Like, whoa, the fuck? <laughs> because I, you know, again, I am in drenched in noobness when it comes to relationships. So the fact that she thought I thought less of her because we had sex the way we did, I was like, that cause it didn't make sense to me at that time. Now I get why that kind of been seen that way, but it just really did not make sense to me how like why do you think I think less of you because we had sex? Come to find out that society ain't shit and a woman that has sex with a man on the first night, no matter how much she wants it, all of a sudden's a bad person. Um, but you know, after like I guess she saw my sincerity and realized like, no, I'm down for whatever relationship and yada yada. We eventually just like started dating like seriously. And I was like all like committed and in for it. And that was a relationship that lasts like a year and a half. Like it was happy. We were having a good time. Um, But sadly that ended. I uh, hope that was like, oh, see, this is why I'm like talking to myself. The reason that relationship ended is because she had the thoughts that things were moving too fast. You know, we're like a year and a half in. Like, things are moving too fast, like, because the next step from here was, like, marriage and stuff. She didn't feel ready. And I'm like, wait, wait, we're ending it because I am too good of a boyfriend that she sees that we can get married? Like, again, didn't make sense to me then. Now... Bro, we were like, well, what was I? I was 21. She was 20. There's a lot of life left to live. Kind of makes sense if one is the panic, like, yo, I kind of want to do some more exploring. Again, monogamy. It's like, I, you know, I, she most likely wanted to explore some more things. If we were tied down, then guess what? Her exploring is done. And next it's babies and stuff. So I can kind of get why the panic happened and, and she wanted to end things. To which I'm like, all right. Made sense. You know what? Fair. And eventually, just, you know, I was respectful about it. I'm, I don't hate her to this day. Every now and again, we still message because she was cool people. No matter how you look at it at the end of the day, she was a dope person. I liked her for a reason. And things ended. Oh, well. We move on. We get older. Um, And then I call this middle period um, kind of the grayish area. Because... Two relationships I got broken up with twice. Um, I'm not even certain like how all dating's supposed to go. My school life is in shambles because I can't get it together. And I'm like just essentially like tired of the whole dating thing. But also I like companionship. Like I enjoy being a boyfriend because it was like there was someone there for me and I was there for them. And I kind of rushed into this next relationship when I shouldn't have. Because there was this one woman that I was truly feeling. I felt like she felt me. Um, But, you know, it's just... I don't know. It was like... The same thing with the um, previous one where it was like things moving too fast. Where it was like it's too perfect. I felt like it was, that was the vibe that I was getting from her. Where it was like... I'm not ready for her. She's not ready for me. And it was like, well, cool. Like, you know how I feel, but I guess I got to move on. And end up with a relationship with another amazing woman. Look, I have some. I am lucky. That's what I'm ex- That's what I'm realizing right now. Like, the women I've come across and gotten relationships with, I am very fortunate. But, yeah. And it was like a quick turn. Like, a week clicked. When I say clicked, there is no... Like, I feel bad because I'm the one that broke that one up. But we clicked so cleanly that it was just the greatest, like, beginning to a relationship. We were just in sync. But 
months into their relationship, that one person that I thought we might be able to um, build something with that was like, well, we're going to move on. Um, she eventually had to like move. There are things going on. And she asked for my help to help her like pack things and move. And uh, again, I'm naive. I'm, I'm drenched in noobness. And I'm young. And I didn't think nothing of it. So I'm like, oh, sure. Why not? I'm like, I'm big. I'm strong. I can go ahead and help out. Um, I go ahead. I, you know, I just help her pack her things. Go ahead and um, throw, um, put them in the truck and whatnot. Uh, she's like... You know, she's emotional because she's about to leave the city. She's been there for a while. She got other personal things going on. And, uh, like, we're almost done. I was like, all right, cool. We got the heavy stuff out the way. It's like, I'm about to go ahead and leave. And, you know, again, drenched in noobness. I'm young and dumb. And, you know, we're like, I give a hug because, like, all right, be safe and yada, yada. And then, like, I'm about to leave. She kind of lingered, held me, and then... She came in and um, she 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 um came in to kiss me and I and I kissed back, and then I stopped, and then I kissed her again. Like I'm, I was truly attracted to this woman. I was like hopeful that we might be a thing, but it didn't happen. And the emotions kind of took over me, and like, you know, I kissed her back passionately, but then I felt all the guilt in the world. Um. I felt really shitty because I am dating this amazing woman that accepted me and we were having the best time. I met her parents. Like, things were good. And I went ahead and kissed this other woman. And I just felt completely shitty. Like, that was the one and only time I've ever cheated. And I felt so bad. And I, I ran out. I, we didn't have sex. I literally like just felt bad. I literally, I ran out. Like I'm like, I walked, I closed the door and I sprinted to my car, got in and left because I knew if I stayed any longer, we were fucking, that was going to happen. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that, that was an experience I didn't know I needed or, or wanted, but it was an experience. Um, but yeah, w moved on from there, um, broke it off with this amazing woman. I had to leave her be because I felt like, look, if I have this emotion tied to this other woman, then I can't have that same emotion for you. So let me break it off now because I cheated. Like, if I am capable of cheating, I'm not ready for a relationship. That was what I was thinking. Um, at that time, because hooray monogamy, but, but, recognize, the concept of cheating cannot be saved by monogamy. Let me say that again. The concept of cheating cannot be saved by non-monogamy, because all relationships are boundaries. Like, that's what they are. Cheating is breaking that established boundary. That can happen in monogamy, that can happen in non-monogamy, that can happen in friendships, that can happen in life. So, the idea that polyamory or whatever concept of non-monogamy is a way to escape cheating, no. That person just doesn't respect your boundaries, therefore, nothing's going to save them until they respect those boundaries of yours. So, this that situation was not the reason why I thought to look into non-monogamy. But after that situation, I kind of like was floating because I, I was like floating, drifting. That's the better term in terms of like go on dates, one night stands, um, like just just BS, kicking with the homies, drinking. Like I was just floating. I did not know like what kind of relationship I wanted or anything to that effect and then fell into a situation with someone where found her attractive it was a good time we constantly hung out i like i loved her vibe that's one thing i definitely loved like the first time we were even kicking it before we even f hooked up she was telling me how one of her goals were to like have sex in multiple countries and then write a book about it and i don't understand why i was so turned on when she told me that again i'm older now i get it but when when it was established there, I was like, wow, this this is a woman's amazing. 
Now, you might be asking, huh, what could have ended that relationship? Race, I'm not gonna lie. She she was white. I'm black. Shout out to Nigeria. And what ended that was my personal ignorance, I would have to say, because the thing that was always in the back of my mind was, hmm, how do I explain to my family that I'm dating someone white? Now, I never really established the relationship. I did use that excuse of, oh no, if we throw a title on there, I'll get scared. Like, you know, some some passive-aggressive weakness that I came up with on the spot because I panicked and I didn't want to lose her. So, I didn't establish things. That situation ship lasted for about two years because we had her on again, off again. Uh, what really hit was after I found I had ADHD, I'm like, okay, I kind of get why my impulsiveness have been kind of hindering this relationship in this way to where she gave me another chance. But then it was like, mm, I am actually thankful that she like just cut me off completely because I, I'm not a fan of the on again, off again. And also it kind of hit me where I realized, what am I getting a relationship for? Like, why? What are we doing here? And after that point, that's when I went ahead and I gave up on, like, dating, just period. Like, dating at, like, just general dating apps. Hey, want to get a drink? Like, I just cut it off. And I had no idea how long that was going to be for. But I went ahead and just cut it all off. I'm like, you know what? We're just going to go ahead and focus on trying to like get my life together, get schooling together. I mean, hey, if the occasional one I stand or a fuck buddy pops in, sure. But I got to make sure ground was established that I'm literally not looking for anything. And I don't want to waste your time. Like that's that was the vibe I was on. And yeah, we're like we're gonna go ahead and get into that journey of my self discovery, and all the way up until today. Just want to go ahead and take a quick break. Let me go ahead and get some water and take a shot because yo, re this is the first time I think I've relived my dating journey, and I deserve a drink. All right, I'll be right back. <music> All right, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. All right, so I kind of ran through the bulk of my monogamous journey. You know, that was a solid, what, six, seven years of my, like, monogamous dating life. And, yeah, at this point, this is when I got to um, the part of the journey where I was really in a place of fuck it. My grades are failing. I don't know why. I mean, at the eventual, I found out it was ADHD. Um, And also, it kind of is like fucking with my psyche because I'm over here thinking, yo, I, not to my own horn, but I am smart as fuck. Be it emotionally intelligent. I'm good with numbers. I suck at languages. Don't try to teach me any language. It ain't gonna stick. I need a translator. But, like... How could I, this person, this straight-A student, this quick-witted, quick-learning guy, all of a sudden be sucking at college? Like, in that was something that was already weighing heavy on me. I couldn't figure out, like, the whole dating thing or what I want or what's going on. And, yeah, I did. I reached the point of, fuck it. I just got to go ahead and take time to myself, kind of reflect and figure some things out. Like, I did not try to date with any intentions for that purpose because I didn't know, I really didn't know what a relationship looked like to me. I have parents that are getting divorced. I have friends that cheat on their partners. Um, I had, I got broken up with twice. I ended up breaking up um, once a situation ship dissolved because I couldn't, like, like, man up and just be like, yo... All right, I love this woman. Like, I personally, I personally, I love black women. You can see my track record. I don't use race as a um, dating indicator. Like, it's not really the first thing on my mind. And in that situation, it was something that just evolved into a situationship versus I'm looking for white women. No, that's stupid. Like, 
why why would race be a part of the equation? But race was a part of the equation because I'm over here thinking of, hmm, what would my family think versus what I think? And so, yeah, for I uh, was about five, six years, I was intentionally single. Like I wasn't trying to date, look for nobody. Um, and within those years, I think a couple years down the lane, made friends with someone and um, actually my best friend, happy birthday to her as I record this today. Um, she actually put me onto this site called uh, FetLife. Now, FetLife is, think of it like Facebook, but for kinky people, BDSM things. Like, you can literally post nudity on your profile picture. Like, that's what a kind of site it is. And um, she kind of put me on there because uh, she knew this, I guess, before I knew this. I had certain qualities in regards to kink and BDSM. It's like, yo, you might just find this entertaining or enjoyable or whatever. Um, get on that site. I mean, look, you put on a site with a bunch of adults, it, it's going to be a cesspool of fuckery because people could barely handle vanilla shit like as an adult. Imagine nudity. Like, come on. I bet most, I bet a lot of them has been stolen and been catfishing others. It's like, it's, it's, it is what you make of it, but understand a lot of people make it shitty. Um, but, you know, I got on there, created a profile, checked it out a bit, didn't mean, didn't think of it much. Um, but then I did have a friend on the vanilla side of things where he was like, hey, yo, there's this hotel party. Mind you, no idea what to expect. Uh, only because I know of the person that throw these parties because I received an invite, but I always chicken out because, so this hotel party is essentially a sex party. And I always chicken out because I'm like, too good to be true. Nah, nah, nah. I feel like someone's going to get got. But, you know, the friend of mine, he was like, yo, you want to come and see? He's like, hey, I've heard of that. Like, oh, I received that invite. And he was like, oh, yeah, it's a good time. Like, last time I went, amazing, beautiful women, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and roll. Which, you know, I ended up going. And it was, it was an experience. It was like the first time I was in a space I'm just chilling, looking around, and someone walked up to me and say, hey, nice to meet you. My name is yada yada. I'm like, oh, nice to meet you. I'm Mike. It's like, can I give you a blowjob? I looked left. I looked right. I looked right at her. Yes. <laughs> and thus, my first experience at a sex party. <laughs> but yeah, and I felt like that was actually pretty cool. It was a good time, and... Honestly, I kind of found it as a bit of an outlet for like the remaining three years because, again, I wasn't out there dating. I'm not here to waste anyone's time, so I wasn't actively looking for sexual partners either because, you know, like apparently I am I'm pretty good at what I do and people like to keep me attached and I'm not a horrible person. So good dick plus a good heart and I'm tall and I'm quite good looking. It's a good couple of, yeah, I want this for myself. And so, yeah, so the sex parties were actually a good sexual outlet for me. And that is how I learned about non-monogamy. Because, I mean, you see these couples come in, they're over here, like, you got the husband chilling on the couch while the wife is off having a good time. And, like, I'm just chilling next to this couple and, like, just chatting, like, huh, like, do y'all come this often? And it's like, yeah, it's like, and I'm asking, like, how did you get to this point? Because, personally... You know, years ago, I always thought, like, it would be dope if, if like, I dated someone and we were swingers. It was always a thought I had because I've always been on the sex, sexually positive side of things. And, um, and yeah, they just broke it down. It's like, oh, yeah, like, we've been married for, like, 10 years. And we kind of realized, like, like, because they were, like, high school sweethearts or whatever. And, like, yeah, we kind of realized, like... Neither of the, like like neither of us actually had any experience outside of each other, and then we were invited to the Sting, um, the Swinger event, and we're like, oh, this makes a lot of light. This is actually pretty fun. And then they got to go to more, and like that's how they established their uh, relationship as a swinger. There was another couple I talked to where they're like, oh no, we were always non-monogamous. I'm like, no, but what? It's like, yeah, we were always non-monogamous. It's like, they're like, yeah, polyamorous, like, hey, that's our actual um, third right there, and yeah, she was, she was like, yeah, she was, that was like a, that was quintessential gangbang, one in the mouth, one in the pussy, and she had two hands active, I mean, yo, it's like, oh, it's like, oh, hey, so you're polyamorous with her, dope, 
<laughs> um, but yeah, like they're like, yeah, this is how it works. Like it's you know, it's pretty much all about communication, being open, sharing desires. I'm like, it it took me back to a ten year old Ike. So when I was ten year old, ten years old, my parents got into like a big fight. I mean, like they were yelling, they were outside. I think my mom was holding like a wooden broom. My sister was crying. Like it was a big, big thing. And I remember at that time, I did say like I wouldn't want a relationship like this. I would want something where me and whoever I'm with, we decide whatever we want. Like, we don't need the pressures of, this is what society says you need to do. Or, this is what your friends need to do. Like, no. Me and her, we make the rules. We'll go ahead and do what we want. And hearing them talk about polyamory, I'm like, that kind of sounds like what the younger version of me was actually, like, trying to go for. And so I kind of like did some digging in, did some looking into like, oh no, this is like an actual bigger thing. And that's kind of when I decided that, no, the, my next relationship is going to be a non-monogamous one. Like we're not going, I'm no longer, I'm tired of the way society has things set up where it's like, yo, find someone, hook up, get married, have kids and you know, grow old and die. I'm like... I feel like life and relationships should be a lot more fun than like a checklist. So that's just pretty much kind of got me on that journey to non-monogamy. Now, to be fair, I am not one of these people that's like, oh, monogamy is not natural. It's like, no, 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 no. You, we have There's animals out there that make for life. Like, I don't want an excuse. I don't want a cheater's excuse to cheat like the only time you ever hear that is when someone has a infidelity problem and it's like monogamy is not natural you know we're animals like no we're humans we made up economies we made up building structures we invented cars we do whatever we want just because you suck at it doesn't mean you could blame human nature and try to say i'm not a bad person because i disrespected your boundaries i'm actually just being human no no cut that shit out because most likely you're going to cheat while non-monogamous too. You, your partner would have said, no, I would prefer you don't go to these parties. Guess what you're doing? You would have went to those parties, i.e. you're cheating on your polyamorous partner. I'm just saying. But yeah, that just that's when I made my decisions. Like, yo, we're going to go ahead and give this a go. Like, this is how I want to go about it. And uh, the first attempt. Shout out to 2019. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to go ahead and give it a go, but there was no manual of, hmm, how do you date non-monogamous? Now, fortunately for me, I learned the hard way one thing that you should never do. Never wait to the third date to say, hey, I'm non-monogamous. Don't wait. Let it be known up front. Why, you may ask? It's because I met this lovely woman. The, uh, I can't remember if it was Bumble or Tinder, but, you know, we match, she's beautiful, I'm like, alright, I love dark skin and big titties, that is literally like, ugh, I am weak, but, <laughs> but yeah, met this beautiful woman, we, you know, went on the first date, I forgot, I think we went for a hookah or something, and just hung out, chopped it up, went on the second date, just as fun, we vibing, third date, you know, we just hanging out, having a good time, and that's when, you know, bound chicken, wow, wow, um, and then, you, then, you know, we're just dating, whatever, and like, around the fourth date or whatever, I'm like, that's when I'm like, I should probably let her know, it's like, Hey, just so you know, the way I see, the way I go about relationships is non-monogamy. It's like, what the fuck is that? And I give the explanation. And she was like, ooh, I, I really don't know about that. And see the problem with wait. We have been on three, four dates. We've had sex and the sex was fire. And she, I see that she's an amazing person. And she sees that I'm a decent guy. And it's like... Now there's hesitancy. Like on her end, it is, I don't want to end this, so we'll wait and see. On my end, I don't want to end this, so we'll wait and see. 
And uh, three months later, it ends in heartache because I have to break it off when I realize she'll never, ever go for the non-monogamy thing. What she was trying to do is see if our relationship is so amazing that I let it go. And yeah, I, I had to... I had to buck up and just break it off, clean break, and let her know, like, this is not going to work. The tears were flowing from her. I felt every bit of dread. I felt bad, but I know that it's better to feel bad in the moment than to feel regret years later. Because no matter what was going to happen, neither of us was going to be completely happy. Because either on one end, she, she goes the uh, route where I'm monogamish, where I have my occasions, where I can go play outside the relationship. Or we go the other route where I am monogamous and I am building resent because I feel limited and restricted in our relationship. So I know the only answer was to just go ahead and outright end it. And so I did and it was terrible. I mean, eventually she like I made sure that there was nothing like I did not have any kind of sex with her after that because I already know, yo, some people be digmatized and they'll be able to try to convince themselves of everything. And she knew what she wanted. I knew what I wanted. And I'm not about to manipulate her, her emotions that way. And so we go ahead and, um, you know, we go our separate ways. She, you know, she eventually found someone, had a kid. She's, she's doing solid. She's doing good. So that's what I'm happy about. Um, but yeah, after that, it was like, all right, fine tuning. Let's, let's go ahead and fix some things up. <laughs> Luckily I did have a community, um, uh, shout out to the formerly known as a tribe called kink now known as black kingdom. There was a non-monogamy group where I did go in. I'm like, you know, asking questions and they kind of hit me to the game of, yo, you have to let it be known immediately. Put it on your description. Like, let it be the first sentence. Like, you have to, like, let it be known that you're non-monogamous. Because there are non-monogamous people out there looking for others. But you have to let it be known. Otherwise, we'll repeat what happened in that situation. And so, I learned my lesson. Um, I didn't really find anyone throughout the year besides I still, like, trying to heal from the previous um, breakup because you got to make sure you take time to unload that baggage because you don't want to pass it on to the next person. And then, you know, New Year's came. January, no, December 31st, 2019. I'm in D.C. I'm about to just go to this little um, play party thing that I was invited to. Um, essentially, it just turned out to be like a little swing or swap situation with a friend, um, with a few friends. And I'm like, all right, I'm just waiting for it. I'm in the hotel. I'm a little bored. Like, let me let an open OK Cupid. What's going on in Houston? I mean, what's going on in Austin? And I fortunately matched with two beautiful women. Um, and then surprisingly, I got like a response that night. And I'm like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, what's going on? And then, like, it was like a quick, like, hey, if anything, let's go ahead and meet on, like, Monday. It's like, ah, I can't do Monday because it's my birthday, but how about the day after? Get some coffee or something. Ironically, she hates coffee dates. And yet, here we are two years later in this relationship. Um, but yeah, it's like, you know, it's like, and then the other woman was like just chatting. It's like, oh, I'm just looking for friends with benefits and the the like exploring non monogamy. And you know, it's like, oh, cool. So, again, I am lucky. I don't know how, you know, shout out to Jesus or whoever, because I have been fortunate. I'm, I will never ever try to treat it as if, oh, this should be everybody. Again, my experience is not everybody. I have been fortunate. And, you know, she is amazing. She had these long braids. And, like, yo, we go ahead and date. We just simply just talk about life. She's been a part of a throuple situation. Um, I had a bad experience with that. I explained to my journey. And um, two years later, we are here now. Um, the other person I was messaging, we're actually still pretty cool friends. Um, every now and again, we um, hook up. Um, she is no longer in the city, so it's more sporadic. Essentially, it's like a comet situation where it's like if we're in the same orbit, then bet. Um, otherwise, you know, we just keep in touch, make sure we're both sane because life is crazy. 
Um, and yeah, that was essentially my journey in regards to like dating and everything. Um, it was, it, it's a ride. Like it's still a ride right now. Like again, I have um various like play partners that I go in their city, and if I'm there, if we have time, we you know we hook up. Maybe either do just purely sexual things or um involve some BDSM kink stuff because my toy bag has gotten bigger. Um, I have some local, um, partners where essentially it's primarily play, um, on one end with occasional conversation, the other one, you know, it's like some romantic things like dates and hanging out, watching movies, things like that. Um, and even through the journey, I actually discovered my preferred dynamic on my end is I am a relationship anarchist. I will go more deep into what is relationship anarchy, but to give the cliff notes of it all, it's essentially a customizable relationship. So each partner, there are discussions about what it is I can provide or willing to provide, what it is they need from me. It's kind of like a kind of like a smorgasbord. Think of it like a shakuri board. Like, hey, I want a board with cheese, crackers, grapes, no oranges. Like it's for each person it is customized to match what we each need and want. Um, and I guess, yeah, that's the best way to put it for that. Like, it's a lot more chaotic, thus the anarchy part, because it involves a lot of communication, a lot of updating, a lot of just checking in to make sure that things are still even keeled versus other forms of relationship. Because, you know... Again, all these ships are boundaries, and the reason why we have labels is, you know, to simplify what our boundaries are in mass, i.e., monogamous, one person to one person, polyamory, one person to many, and that person to many, like, it's multiple loves, like, it's an established dynamic, so you have a general understanding of what's involved. Relationship anarchy, all right, person one, they require, um romantic, sexual, etc. The other person, cuddles, platonic, like it's a lot more involved than the other forms in regards to um, meeting individual needs as well as not overextending your own personal bandwidth. So that is where I am in my journey, at least today. Who knows what goes on down the line because it, it just varies. Things change. People change. Circumstances change. So, yes, I'm a relationship anarchist. That does not decline anything in regards to me either having, like, a nesting partner, which means someone I live with and split bills with. Marriage. That is always on the table. Kids. Like, these are all things that will be on the table no matter the dynamic. So, yeah, that's just actually where I am right now in this journey. <laughs> This was actually going to include a second portion, um, but I feel like this is actually long enough. So what I'm going to do is the second portion I really want to get into, um, there's this um, person, a polyanagram on FetLife that wrote this amazing note titled Non-Monogamy, How Do I Deal With Insecurities? And um, that's going to go ahead and be my next episode because... When I tell you she wrote the fuck out of that note, I'm tell it is amazing. And I had to make sure I shared it. I, thankfully, I got her permission. I just got to make sure I give the shout out to her again, Polyanagram. Um, it's going to be the next episode. Um, I would put the link in, but it's to Fet Life, and you got to like sign up. And again, that might that might not be your sensibility. It might um, it might be your sensibility. I'm not completely certain. But at the bare minimum, I will have her name in the show notes next week. That way you can look her up if you already have a FetLife account. Um, but yeah, this is going to be today's episode. Whew, that first step, like, yo, I had to go through my own little trauma right quick. Like, yo, man, I didn't realize this journey I took was actually that that tumultuous. But I'm glad I, you know, was able to share with y'all. Um... If you have your own personal journey you want to share, you want some tips, advice, or if you just have general questions, just be sure to reach me, uh, reach out to me. My email is hitchhikersguide to enm at gmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at hitchhikersguide to enm. 
and also on um that's not twitter sorry you'll find me on instagram with hitchhiker's guide to enm and on twitter you'll find me at hitchhiking to enm that's hitchhiking with the one h in the middle so h-i-t-c-h i-k-i-n-g t-o-e-n-m and i do appreciate y'all i will go ahead and leave you with these words of wisdom Every battle is not worth winning. Some battles, it's always best to just walk away. Because in the end, what you think is a win could actually turn out to be your biggest loss. And on that note, y'all go ahead and take care and be safe. Appreciate y'all.